Hi, I'm Kanisha Leggett, and I'm back again um, with KUMSLT, and today we will be discussing a video that we watched about two six-year-olds um, and ADHD. ADHD. Um, watching the videos, I had mixed emotions. I was excited to see the young boy developing into his own person, excited about school and his prospects and about what he found important and special about himself. But at the same time, I was discouraged to see the sadness in the little girl's eyes, to see that she wasn't as confident, that she felt left out and sad to see that she did not see her own worth or that she was just as important as every other kid. So that was difficult for me to watch um, having my own children, you know, to see a kid struggle is a hard thing. Um, it's one of the reasons that I do not work with pediatrics. I find that a challenge for me to watch a child struggle, even if I might be able to assist that child um, in developing those skills. I, it, it tugs at the heart to see a kid um, sad or state that they were bullied. Um, if I had to put a message at the end of that video, I would ask the people watching to close their eyes. I would describe a kid in school sitting at a desk where gifts are being passed out, Valentine cards are being passed out, birthday party invitations are being passed out, and there is one kid who never receives a card, who never receives an invitation. I would ask them to then transition to a lunchroom full of bustling kids running around chatting and notice a kid sitting at the end of the table who nobody is sitting with, who nobody is talking to, that's eating the sandwich alone. And when suggested to go and join the other group, they don't. I would then ask them to move to outside in their mind, eyes remaining closed and describe all the children running around playing on the monkey bars and swinging on swings and kicking balls and jumping and all the chatter that's going on around them and notice that there is that kid again, standing by themselves, looking off into the distance, there but not there, present but unpresent, aware yet unaware. And describe that a teacher walks over to that kid and says, come on, go join the other kids. And even as the teacher brings that child over to the group, the child is in the group and yet the group plays around the child. And then I would ask them to imagine that that was their kid. Struggling, alone, in school, no friends, no way to cope, no social skills. And then see if that did not make them advocate for ADHD kids. See if that did not push them to have an open discussion with their kids. To push to have occupational therapy in the school, in the classrooms. Um, so I have a special guest today with me. And I'd like to ask him to come over and join me. This is Damon, and Damon is mine. <laughs> Say hi, Damon. Hi. So, Damon is, how old are you? Eight. So, Damon watched the video after I watched the video, and I asked Damon what he thought about the video, and the first thing that Damon pointed out was he liked the boy. He liked how excited the boy was. Um, I asked him if he thought that if the kids were there in, their, in his school, in his class, who he would most likely play with. And instantly he said the boy. He said the boy looked fun. The boy was excited. He could understand what the boy was saying. The boy was confident in the way he talked. And so then when I asked him about the little girl, he said most likely he wouldn't play with her. 
Um, but it wasn't that he thought something was wrong with her. He said that she didn't talk clearly. She didn't say a lot of words. She seemed to be by herself. So then I asked Damon if he had that little girl in his class, could he think of any ways that he might be able to help her and to get her in to his social group? And what did you tell me? What were some of the ways you thought that you might be able to help people play with her or you play with her? Um, I would ask her to like come over to us or I would go over to, to her if we were at lunch and she was sitting by herself. Right. And then I said, what if your friends didn't want to go over to her? Then what would you do? Then I would go over to her by myself. And what if your friends said that she was weird? Then I would just go over there anyway. But how would you help your friends to see that she wasn't weird, that she might have just been different? Because different isn't bad, right? Mm-hmm. It is bad? I mean, no, it's oh. not Oh. Because <laughs> you're different, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm different, aren't I? Yeah. So how how would you help her come over and, and join in with you and your friends? Mm. I think I would probably try to explain to them um that different is good and everything and they should um try to at least go over there and talk to her right so as you can see my eight-year-old was trying to process out his own ways of helping out a kid so if we as not only occupational therapists aren't planning a way of helping other kids see that different isn't bad, then we certainly can't expect parents to be advocating for that. So therapy definitely has to not only help the kid that's struggling with ADHD, but we also as a community have to make sure that we're making people aware of the behaviors, aware of the things that kids with ADHD are struggling. And we have to do that with our own kids, our own. If you have grandkids or nieces and nephew, those conversations need to be had. And the more open we are with the discussion, the less taboo it becomes. So I would like to thank my special guest, whom I love, for giving me a few minutes of his time and then that that would be how I would go about ending my video. I, I would end with putting them in the frame of mind where they're thinking about a kid in school and the struggles and symptoms that that kid with ADHD is going through and then ask them to imagine that was their kid. That was their niece, their nephew, their grandchild struggling and what would we want other people to consider how would we want other kids to treat our kid to treat our loved one and that's how we should be training our kids that's how we should be training the classrooms that's how we should be training the teachers to better understand what children with ADHD are going through again I'm Kenesha Leggett with KUMSOT this was my discussion on the video for ADHD. Thanks. Have a great evening.